Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Lakeithia Nicole with Lakeithia Nicole Talk, and I am super eager. I was, I've been super eager, forgive me, um, to do this particular interview with Mr. Hawk Newson. I'm so excited that he actually came to do this interview, and we're going to get right to it. I don't want to delay. We're going to get right into it. So thank you, Mr. Hawk Newson, for this opportunity and for coming through. I, I can't wait to learn more about you from my point of view right on. versus I've, I've seen so much about you. I've read a lot of stuff about you because I wanted to be informed about who you were, what your story was, where you came from and so with that being said there were some things I wanted to ask myself different than the things that I had heard um, and seen or whatever but yeah you can go right ahead. On. No I'm, I'm very excited to be here I'm happy to support a black woman uh, and you know I, I'm always up for talking about the uh, liberation of black people so I'm very happy to be here. Yes that's yeah. so good so I'm um, getting right into it um, the beginning. I wanted to know what inspired you um, from the beginning to just represent. Um, I saw that your parents were were also into this whole thing, like this, mm -hmm. the, the whole the politics and all those different things. What I saw when I what I actually saw in an interview. Well, what inspired you to just get a part of this whole thing yourself? Like, well, um, well, I was born on April fourth, right, in seventy seven. And that was uh, nine years earlier. That was the day Dr. King was assassinated, right? So it's significant mm -hmm. for black people. Adam Clayton Powell died on that day. It's also Maya Angelou's birthday. So cosmically, right, mm -hmm. like, like this is my path. Like everything about my birth date says that I should be fighting for mm -hmm. black people, fighting mm -hmm. to help black people liber liberate themselves. Um, you think about my upbringing. Everywhere you looked in my house, it was like some African artwork. It was books. It was, it was just always books on books on books. Uh, my father was more radical than my mother. My mother, my father was never above calling somebody a racist cracker. Like, mm -hmm. right, Reagan. I ain't know. I barely knew what a president was, but I knew Ronald Reagan was a racist cracker. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it was always they had shows on PBS like Eyes on the Prize. They talked about the civil rights struggle. Um, Julian Bond had a show called Like It Is. Like, this was my upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was a fixture in every family member, like my grandmother who used to babysit me, like my house, we were always news junkies. In the morning, you know, it was, it was news on. It was mm -hmm. news in one room, cartoons for me in another. Mm -hmm. And always at 6, 7 o'clock at night, we were always watching the news. So, like, I was raised to be informed. Mm -hmm. And to have this passion to liberate mm -hmm. the people, you know. Um, my dad was always big on community. He was that dude in the hood who would take all of the kids, 10, 15 kids, to the neighborhood, to the, um, to the, to the pool, mm -hmm. right? And, and I remember one time we ain't had money to put all the kids on a bus, so we, like, walked three miles to the pool. Like, him, he got the other adults and, like, you know, parents with kids on their necks, on their shoulders. And that was just always it for us. It was always about community. It was always about looking out for each other. It was always about family and um, fighting back against the system. Very good. Very good. So I see you were pretty much born in it. You you know, like your history with Martin Luther, I mean, not uh, Martin Luther King, but just the day you was born, all those different things together. It obviously shows that it's your line with it. But mm -hmm. when did it become your passion? Because to move fast forward, I see how adamant you are with the fight. Like you're serious mm -hmm. about it. Um, what gave you that passion to just that drive for this like that? It, it happens in stages. Okay. Right. So when Trayvon Martin happened, I was in law school, right? Mm -hmm. At the time, I thought I was going to be a corporate lawyer. I was just going to go and make money and, um, <laughs> and, and, and help out how I could, right, mm -hmm. with making money. Then Trayvon happened, and, and, and I organized my first action in the school. I had mm -hmm. st uh, the faculty come out. I had the students come out. Uh, around that time, one of my friends approached me. He was like, yo, you should run for government. You should run for city council in the Bronx. I'm like, bet. But when I went to the streets, I was talking the stuff that the world is talking about now in 2013. Mm -hmm. And folks wasn't as woke mm -hmm. as they are now. So mm -hmm. they looked at me like, yo, this dude, this, this brother is crazy. He mm -hmm. out of his mind. It's not that serious. But now they see it. And, um, you know, I lost the election as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, um, 
my competitor gave away turkeys. I was so hurt. Mm-hmm. My next door neighbors who knew me since I was like three, they took one of those turkeys, mm-hmm. right? But I saw the importance of feeding people. Mm-hmm. That's why like during COVID, we raised like $50,000 and fed 6,000 people. But Amazing. we were delivering to doors in the South Bronx every day. Mm-hmm. In particular, Patterson Projects. Mm-hmm. We were there every day. Mm-hmm. They had, out of all the housing complexes, they had the most COVID deaths. And we was in those buildings. Funny story, somebody had a big black pit bull mm-hmm. right and we we delivering the food and all that and, and this dog like looking out the door and it was like oh shit he's coming out this mm-hmm. dog ch- we getting chased by pit bulls delivering food wow. you know it's funny now it wasn't funny when it was <laughs> happening but like yeah yeah but um so it happens in stages um i i, I after i didn't win the election eric gone to happen okay right and then it was just like always marching 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 and at that time i was what you might call a reformist Mm-hmm. I believe that this system can be fixed from the inside out, mm-hmm. right? And um, I realized, I thought that you could talk to the other side. A lot of people like, I'll talk to people and make them understand. Mm-hmm. These racists don't want to hear what you got to say unless you're making them happy, mm-hmm. okay? Unless you're placating them, they do not hear want to hear anything you have to say. They don't want to deal with the truth. Mm-hmm. They really, like, have this allergic re- reaction to the truth. And um, after trying that and just trying to talk to people... I became a savage. I became mm-hmm. unreasonable, and then it became like destroy the system, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Replace it with something new. Uh, we're talking about things now like rewriting the Constitution. We're talking about buying a piece of property in another state and just building our own community, this self-sufficient wow. farming animals, you know, things like that. Yeah. So um, it's, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's definitely levels of escalation to where I am right now mm-hmm. and um so yeah it's it's but I think my turning point wasn't even Mike Brown okay my turning point was really Eric Garner because that's when I hit the streets and then I just couldn't leave after that it, it's like this movement this struggle this revolution it catches you mm. and you can't get away there's mm-hmm. some people who marched this summer that went back to their normal lives but there's young people I see out there now that's really in it and on it every day yeah and that's how I was Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. Um, I wanted to also take you back to a little bit. Um, I seen where you, your original name, you know, I thought, I was like, wow, Hulk Newsom is very unique. Uh-huh. Um, but your original name, you talked about it being Walter in a few different interviews that I checked out. I wanted to see, like, from you, like, what inspired the name change? Oh, okay. So um, it was like 2000 for 2005 and um it was my little sister's birthday and i used to have a rottweiler named shaka zulu Mm -hmm. and i was walking shaka like in the concourse in my hood and this big hawk came it was so big i thought she was gonna pick up my rottweiler like it was a big bird Mm -hmm. and then it just set up on this statue it's right there on 161st and i just looked at this bird for like 15 20 minutes it was one of those moments and then things started happening like i'd be driving and a hawk would fly, like, not in the sky, but, like, 12 feet in front of my car mm. for, like, a half mile to mm. a mile. Mm. Um, my son had uh, a pacemaker in his heart. We took him to the hospital. I took my ex across the street to get us some food, and it was a hawk circling the hospital. And I was like, it's going to be all right. Uh, hour later, the surgery was supposed to be, like, three, four hours. An hour later, they called, said, come back. And it turns out that his they took the pacemaker out to replace the battery, and his heart was strong enough without it. Mm. So they took the, the pacemaker and removed it. Um, before my dad died, I saw two hawks, like, every couple days for, like, a month. And when he died, I didn't see him again for a while. So I started doing research. And my research um, my research of, of indigenous people, some call them Indians, believed that a hawk was a sign that you were on the right path wow. or it was a warning. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, it started making more sense. Mm-hmm. And then um, about four and a half years ago, like I was a very uh, 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 angry person. I was an abusive person. I was an alcoholic. And mm-hmm. God showed me mm-hmm. that I had to change my life or either I was going to hurt somebody really bad I was going to hurt myself. Either way, it, God made it apparent mm-hmm. that my alcoholism had to stop. Wow. That I had to change my ways. It's but powerful. before I made that big mistake, I was in L.A. with Josh Edwards, our mutual friend. Yeah, and yeah, Josh yeah. was driving me to the hotel, and mm. these hawks just kept flying 
back, I was like, yo, and I get these feelings with it. I was like, something ain't right. Something just isn't right. And sure enough, something real bad happened. And um, and so I, I gave my life to God. I stopped drinking. And when I got mm-hmm. baptized, right, um, I changed my name to Hulk. So wow. it was like Saul and Paul. I'm not likening myself to yeah. Paul, the apostle, yeah. but it was definitely like, in the, even in the Bible, when Jesus met people and changed their lives, he mm-hmm. changed their names. So yes, like, he did. Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah. It's, it's so funny. So in your question, like in this one answer, you've answered <laughs> like a list of my questions <laughs> behind it. Like I was right wondering, on. but you, you even, you basically, I was wondering what that meant, the Hulk, because I, I mm-hmm. felt like it was also like you said, it was like your life was alignment and God was speaking to you because you kept seeing it. And the Bible also talks about when you, like a repetitive, when you see things more than once or twice, it's not even a dream. You have it more than once, twice, three times, you know that God is speaking. He's saying something. So Amen. through that, it was like God was definitely sending you a sign and he was speaking to you. What happened to get you? Now this, I didn't know that you got on a, a different path. You said you were, yeah. got on, you know, with the alcoholic. What put you on the path of that, uh, the last, like whatever that had happened? My sobriety? Um, the path of you had got, was it the, the situations with um, just your life? I read some things what you went through. We're going to get into uh-huh. that. But I wonder what put you on the path where you felt like you were going down the wrong path. Oh, um, I started drinking. Mm-hmm. I started first time. I drank a 40. I was 11. Mm. I was 11 years old. And we was drinking, you know, it's the Bronx. We were drinking with your crew. And... um it just developed over time. Got you. Okay. So at around seventeen, it was like you was drinking every couple of days. It was a you know big bottle on the weekend. But as I progressed, you know, college and and around those years, it was like drinking every day. Got you. And it got real bad. And in my early thirties, and it was like a bottle a day. You know what I'm saying? You know how most people just drink a bottle, you get a bottle of... Back then it was Great Goose and Belvedere, Belvy. Yeah. And um, you get that, you sip on it, whatever, it's something left for later. But when we drank, we drank to black out. Mm-hmm. We didn't drink to just drink. We drank to numb ourselves and to just black out. Yeah. So, um, like, alcohol really took a hole in my life. Like, it was bad, y'all. Wow. It was for like, years, it seems like. like yeah, for years. For, wow. But you don't think it's a problem. Because when you're young... It's fun. Right. You make some mistakes. Mm-hmm. You, know, you do some foul shit, foul mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, you feel like, you feel like, oh, he's just having fun. I went too far this time. I went too far that time. Mm-hmm. But it got to a point where it was just all dark. Mm-hmm. Where it was like when I drank, I was just a mean, nasty person. And then you added this movement into it. Yes. Right? Yes. So you working with these families whose loved ones is dead, mm-hmm. families fighting families, you fighting against the police, you fighting against the government, the hood ain't coming out like they should, this person who's supposed to be helping isn't helping. It, it, it was just so much yes. pain, it was so much darkness that, that I, I kept calm. Mm. You know, but when I drank, it all came out. Mm. And I hurt those that was closest to me. I hurt the people who I loved. And it was all foul. There's no excuse for it. I'm not even blaming the um, alcohol. I'm looking at me. I'm Mm. looking at my life's trauma. I'm Mm. looking at, you know, the monster that I was, the way that I became a monster. And, um... And, and just just trying to feel it, fix it. Like, I, am I a hundred percent healed? No, no, no one ever it's a process, is. But you though. just, it's a process, yeah, you, right? You constantly healing. You know, so funny. Um, I, I was talking with someone about that, and so that healing process, we, it's all right. It's like as long as you're on that path, you know, because obviously you're a changed person. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you talk about that, so it was the situation in Los Angeles four years ago that put you on the. The path of Christ, um, not Christ, giving your life to God. Yeah, Christianity. Believe it, believe it or not, the woman that I hurt mm. might have been one of the single most important women in my life. I think about that shit every day, yo, because she taught me so much, mm. so much. She showed me so much in the relationship, but she exposed even with the dark. Mm. She exposed a part of me. Mm. That I didn't know existed in the capacity that mm. existed, and um, and I'm terribly sorry that, mm. that she had to experience that side of me. But um, I thank her for what she taught me. I thank her for showing me myself, and you know I pray that God bless her life. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't ask for forgiveness. It's not my place to ask for forgiveness. I could just be sorry and give people the space to heal. 
Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so with 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 all of that, because I feel like you took a negative, though. I feel like you took a negative. You know, it, it, see, the thing is, I feel like we all go through things. I think we all have our own path. But, like, I, I have to get back on this path that you're on. You know, believe it or not, it's, it's a new path. It's a new day. We can't really dwell on the things that happen. We don't want to allow that to defeat our today. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because sometimes we know that we went through so much, but we have to give ourselves... Um, basically raise up off ourselves. We're human beings. You know, you don't know what some things in your past could have uh, evoked that type of, provoked that type of um, trauma to make you act like that. And then there was a drink and who knows the, you know, the story of your life to the, to, to the full totality of what happened, Absolutely. right? No one knows that but you. But the thing is, it's like where you are today. You're on this path where you're leading, you know, thousands and thousands of people. Um, because I know your story took to me, I didn't understand why some people were, I didn't really get what, made them angry because as I watch your story, what you're doing now mm-hmm. is all positive. I mean, yeah. from fighting for us and our people, going out there, this is a thing that I see that you do. You risk your life. I didn't know until today that you were, you got injured by the police officers. And mm-hmm. I said, so, okay, why is he still this passionate? They beat, beat you up. You talked about your shoulder being, you know, I'm not sure if you said dislocated, but you yeah. did say the, the nerve damage that you have all the way down to your feet. Uh-huh. And all of that, and I'm like, okay, and he's still adamant about fighting for this people. You know what I mean? Yeah. What? Where does that come from? I mean, it's what what I embody is the American spirit. They drafted the American doctrine for it to pertain to white people, yeah. but it's ours mm-hmm. because we deserve it. We're included in it, and we demand our stake in it. Mm-hmm. So for me to stand up and say, "Give me liberty." Or give me death is the American way. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like, yeah. like that's the American way. I don't have my vest on. It's in the truck. Like, um, you know, we are constantly doing trainings. We are constant. I'm nasty with a nine. Like, I'm nasty. Like, you understand? We mm-hmm. got big ass guns. Like, we are ready because people like us who put our people first mm-hmm. and take it to the government. To demand change. Once we start uh, uh, progressing, people try to hurt us. Right. Right? Right. People try to harm us. Like Mm -hmm. you said, you know, I got liquid in both of my shoulders. I got nerve damage. I got damage in my back. You know, some mornings, like, I get up and take me. Yeah, two lawsuits against the city. And and, and they definitely, you know, they definitely have... um, have 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 harmed me, but you know I've dished out harm as well. Fuck them, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. Like you ain't mm-hmm. just gonna be able to do what you want to me or right. my people. That's not right. how, how it goes. Right. You know, um, I don't promote violence. Right. But I promote self defense. Right. Frequently. Right. But um, it, it's not even about me. Like mm-hmm. like I understand. Like I spent a lot of my life thinking about me first. Mm-hmm. Right, like mm-hmm. me, if I gotta do this, I gotta do this for me, my family, mm-hmm. and 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 the whole time I was living wrong, mm-hmm. because it's I've been given gifts, I've been given this intellect, Amen. I've been given this voice, I've been given this size, I've been mm-hmm. given this stature and this presence, mm-hmm. right, for mm-hmm. a reason, mm-hmm. and that reason is to benefit other people. Yes, you know, um, what's 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 really uh, amazing about it is we do phenomenal things for people by the grace of God. Yes, right? Amen. Like like, you know, this Christmas we giving out I can't even count how many bikes, how many tricycles, computers, wow. laptops. Like we did it last year. Mm. Um we feed people. Um I, I, I if if <laughs> I can't even tell you how much cash I've put in hands mm. since May. Wow. Like literally. Wow. Literally like, wow. you know, like like People who need it. Here, mm-hmm. I slap your five on and put it in your hand. People have an action. People have this. They need hotels. They need they need family to be taken care of. People, homeless people. Like, mm-hmm. I gave these homeless people. We was getting some food in Harlem. I gave these homeless people $100, right? Mm. This dude. And he went back and showed it to us. He was like, this real. He never saw a blue hunter. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He never, and he couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. So he went and got his girlfriend. They came back. Both of them was like, is this real? Mm. And we still standing on the corner in Harlem. We eating. And um, and then they was like, we went to the stores and they told us it's real. Like, like things we throw away, right? Lunch, 
for the three of us in this room is what a buck fifty, two hundred dollars if mm-hmm. we want decent food, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And probably more depending mm-hmm. on where you go. Yeah. If if you give somebody, you laugh, right? <laughs> no, but like for real. Right? <laughs> but uh, if you um, and just like a hundred dollars of that in somebody's hand, who outside begging, that you know how much joy that bring them. Mm-hmm. And I know people like, yeah. oh, you might run and get drunk, whatever. <laughs> if, a, if a person is homeless and they out there struggling and starving and you could do something to bring an immense amount of joy to that person's life, mm-hmm. then you do it, right? Right, You Amen. do it. We put Amen. about, Juneteenth, we put about 25000 in the hood. Wow. Right? For that one day. Wow. Um, uh, we hired five food trucks. Mm. Impossible Beef gave us um, 5,000 pounds of sandwich meat. Wow. We gave away 90 boxes of fruits and vegetables. Not boxes like, like that. I'm talking like boxes. Wow. I'm telling you like people in Webster, Claremont, and the projects was going home with garbage bags okay. full of fruits and vegetables. Wow. Right? We gave away underwear for women. We gave away um, feminine hygiene products, uh, socks, T-shirts, like you name it. Mm. All for the hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. And Real it's like, change. you know, the money ain't it. Right. But the money makes people feel loved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the money will bring people to your movement. Right. Right? They be like, oh, he feeding me. Let me hear what he got to say. Mm-hmm. That's the game the politicians play. Mm-hmm. You understand? So I'm always about putting money back in the community. Uh, we get political contact tracks, consulting. I hire people from shelters. Wow. Right? I hire them. I'm giving you the secret sauce. I hire <laughs> people because they be like, how you get these people? I hire people from shelters. I hire people who really need the money. Um, there, there's been there's been families. Actually, it's funny because this family turned on me. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. the two twin sons, mm-hmm. uh, for a summer, month and a half of work, they, they got about... Seven grand a piece, mm-hmm. and the older sister got about ten, twelve thousand, mm-hmm. right? So you talking about a family that live in a shelter, right? Yeah, got twenty six thousand wow. for a month and a half of work, wow. and that's what Hawk Newsom, that's what Black Lives Matter New York, wow. you know, Black Lives Caucus, that's what we did. Yeah. You understand? Because I'm not playing with people. Um, I took dudes away for like two days, to do some political work in another state. They came back with a stack. Like, people in our neighborhoods ain't making $500 a day. Right, no. But we get, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. we get the opportunities. We bring those opportunities to the people. Beautiful. And and, and with that, you know, it's, it's it's this model. It's like black people helping black people. But at yes. the same time, it's black people fighting for black people. Yes, I love that. Right. I love that. So, see, that's where, this is what it's about, though. You see, you take, um, I'm not going to say it was a, uh, well, you would know if it was... Basically, I'm going to just say it like this. You turned it beautiful, this story, because look at everything that you're doing. But I'm wondering, not wondering, I know that if you hadn't went through those things that you went through, you wouldn't be who you are today. And so it's a blessing and it's a beauty in what you went through because look at what you're doing, the change that you're bringing. You know what I mean? So it's like, don't be so hard on yourself because like God gave you, even when you talked about your status and, and your stature and, and, and just the voice alone, you know what I mean? So you, basically you were created um, for a pur- with a purpose in mind. God wanted to use you to do great Amen. things. You you know, and that's what he's doing through you. Um, that's why I said when I when I came across your story and I read about it, I don't know. You basically gave me way more than what I knew. You know, so now I, I really, really, really uh, admire you even more you. because I didn't even know about all of the giving that you were doing. Because a lot of people don't realize that, like you said, it's not about the money. But if you have that money and you're able to give back to other people, you see what I'm saying? People that are in need, you're mm-hmm. changing their lives. I don't care what anyone says. You're giving them this, and this is life. You see what I'm saying? That's putting life into your body. You said bags of fruits and vegetables, I mean boxes, or whatever the case is. So that's basically giving life into the people. You didn't give them death. You didn't give them McDonald's. And I'm sorry, but I had to talk about that because- You know, people don't realize that health is wealth, Mm -hmm. you know, and so I even, I I appreciate that as well. I also saw you on, speaking of the fruits and the vegetables, I saw you on, um, I can't think of the guy's name. I should have remembered his name. Dr. Mark Hyman. Yes, I love him. I watch him on YouTube Mm -hmm. and um, he's one of my people. Remember I told you I was vegan, but um, he's one of my people that I go to and, um, about health things. Mm-hmm. And so tell me how important is that? Is that the reason why you got them the fruit? and Because you could have got them anything. What made you give these people? Well, Mark Hyman, 
I met him through his son. Dr. Mark Hyman was the doctor for the Clintons. Mm-hmm. He was Tom Brady's doctor. Mm-hmm. This, this dude was in Haiti performing surgeries in the street with bottles of liquor. Really? Word. It wasn't no medical assistance for people wow. in Haiti. And he out there saving lives like bottles of liquor. Wow. You feel like it's a saw or something, like some old you yeah. war movie. But wow. that's how he that's how he how invested he is in, in saving people. Mm. And he pulled me to the side one day and he was like, Hawk, I respect what you're doing. I think you got it wrong. The um, biggest threat to black people is the poison they put in their body. Yes, come right? on. Yes. He was like, he explained to me how the health, because I'm still learning how to eat right, mm-hmm. right? But he was telling me like those um, those symbols they put on cereal and stuff to say it's healthy. Right. He was like, anybody can put that on anything for $250,000. He said <laughs> right. the reason why the Black Panthers <laughs> were so big on feeding people and, and bringing those doctors to the community and nurses and evaluating people in the streets because they knew that health was the ticket. Yes, right. It and is. then, you know, upon further research, you look at prisons where they change diets, violence decreases, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you give them a supplement or a vitamin, it decreases by another 30%, right? Mm-hmm. So not only uh, through are you saving lives by feeding them good food because the number one killer of our people is diabetes. Yes, it um, is. Heart disease. Heart disease and heart attacks. Exactly. You know, and that's coming from that. So you're saving their lives that way. But people always want to talk about crime in the community. They say black on whatever. I hate that term. But um, if you give people better food, they'll be less likely to fight with each other. It puts them in a better mood. Mm-hmm. And I don't think enough people take that approach. And mm-hmm. you know me, it's like I, I'm about 300 plus right now. I like steaks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm a carnivore. I'm mm-hmm. keep it real with you. I'm a carnivore. So, um, I'm, you know, uh, Dr. Mark Hyman gave me this anti-inflammatory diet, mm-hmm. certain uh, foods to eat. And my queen, she got me um, on this keto diet right now. Mm-hmm. So it's like you eat as much um, protein. Yeah. Or uh, whatever. I call it the Farrakhan diet because okay. I can't eat nothing white. No bread, no starch, you know, no oh. rice, no no sugar. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, yeah, but it's it's been working. I dropped like five pounds in the last week. Really? In the yeah. last week? Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. good. In a week, <laughs> right five on. pounds? I want to do that. So um, you said it's a Farrakhan diet, so that's not like vegan or pes- pescatarian. Is you, are you getting meat? Um, yeah, I eat meat. Okay. Like, I what tried, kind of meat I you? tried to go vegan. I, I like steaks. You like steaks? So I get, um, really clean, uh, good, uh, steak. Shout out Brooklyn Chop. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I get, um, I, 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 get, I like nice steaks. Mostly it's fish though. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say about yeah, that because yeah, even fish. with my, so here's my thing. I'm vegan, but recently I've been trying out a lot of here because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in New York, but I'm mm-hmm. actually back in Los Angeles is where we live. My family, everything, we're there. But I love the food in uh, New York. With that being said, I've been doing a lot of salmon, so I'm becoming more like pescatarian, but I'm still mm-hmm. vegan because I don't eat anything else but the salmon. Ah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I love like the that. salmon. It's like and vegan with a twist. Yeah, vegan yeah, with a twist. It. So uh-huh. when you said fish, what kind of fish are you eating? It's mostly salmon. Okay, yeah. It's mostly, I'm black catfish. You normally eat catfish. I yeah. Have, you know, I, I cheated yesterday. I had fish and grits. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, man. It's Sunday. I went to church. I, I understand. You know what I mean? You Some gotta catfish have a cheat and cheese days. grits. Like, yeah, Honestly, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's something new. How long have you been on this health situation? Um, wow. Uh, I was doing really well. Okay. Right? And then COVID hit. Mm-hmm. So now you inside, you walking mm-hmm. around, mm-hmm. and then um, Donald Trump put a target on my back back mm-hmm. in back in June. Mm-hmm. He said that I was treasonous. I was I was I was treasonous. I was I was guilty of insurrection and sedition, and I started getting thousands of death threats. Right, so we had to hype up security. Um, I got security specialists advised on how I should move. You know. Um, I usually wear body armor. My team is usually in body armor. Um, but the days of me really being able to walk around, like, carefree. Like, I used to walk from Wall Street in Manhattan to 86th Street. Mm. That's over 100 blocks. I used to just walk and think. But now, my head is constantly on a swivel. And my life, I'm recognizable now. You know, yeah. no matter where I go in this country, people are like... I went to Australia you. a few years ago, and the wow. lady in Australia at the um, Sky Club, whatever, 
You know what I mean? So, so Recognize she recognized me. Wow. Yeah. So it's um, it's it's different. So I move different. Yeah. And I'm usually in the truck. You know what I mean? I'm usually moving around. So I'm 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 living a a a, a, a different kind of life. You know what I mean? And and it, and it inhibits me from my my number one uh 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 uh. uh Ex- way of exercising used to be walking, mm-hmm. but, but for safety reasons, I can't walk like I used to. So now it's just as I'm pounds crept up, I mm-hmm. put on a quick 30, 40. So I gotta, um, I gotta, just, you know, what you could do too, just to keep your, your cardio going is just getting a, um, you know, a treadmill just so you can keep your, yeah. your cardio going so uh-huh. you can just still take care of yourself while you do. You know, I, I consider this the work of God, what you're doing. Amen. You know what I mean? You're Amen. sent by God to do this. So. I appreciate it. I used to yeah. do, um, I ran a New York City marathon. Wow. I used to love running, but when the cops messed up my back, I can't run. Mm. So I used to get on the bikes, right? Like mm-hmm. city bikes was my shit. Um, and I, I take the city bikes everywhere, but now it's too easy to just ram me and run me off the road, right? Mm. You know, so um, they running us over left and right. Like wow. there, there was a, a a woman Castillo out of Howard Beach, Brooklyn, who ran over six activists three days ago. Wow! She got a desk appearance ticket. There have been three people who ran over activists this summer, mm. and all that they received were tickets. Mm. So this is what New York government and the NYPD is saying: that it is safe to drive your car in the Black Lives Matter activist. Wow! Work. That's crazy. Work. Wow. Wow. So you have a lot that you're dealing with just overall. You know, you, you, you know, it's so funny. You know, you look amazing because I wouldn't see why you wouldn't be stressed out. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So I guess that. you were just aware you like, I know God is with me. He wouldn't have given me this mm-hmm. mission, this task if I couldn't do it. Yeah. Because you just feel, you seem so relaxed because that's a lie. I didn't even know this, that you have yeah. people out. So right now, this is just my, out of my own curiosity, are there people that you think are, they're probably looking for you just because they know? Hold on, let me show you. Okay. Um, see, it's one of these fake politicians hitting me up right now. Mm-hmm. Would love to connect. You running for borough president. You, know, you ain't low. I'm going to show you what I get every day. Oh, my God. This is from one dedicated person. Mm. Uh, fucking faggot nigga. We're going to kill you. And he texts me from two new different numbers every day. I get it on social media. I get it on Facebook. I get it on Instagram. You know, like that's, that's, that's every day. So that's life. Like you be having, yeah. having the best time of your life, and you open up your your phone. And let me tell you, this sicko sends me pictures of penises. <laughs> Yo, like who takes the time wow. to find like glizzies and send pictures of them to somebody? Like, like. Uh, I don't care if people gay. They like what they right, like, but I'm right, not. Right. Why are you sending me this? And I could be standing out in public and I make a mistake and open that up. And, and now I got a big black glizzy on my screen. Pause. You could have children and, around yeah, you. It's I like, mean, anything. You could be around your mother, your yeah, kids, yeah. or anyone. It's just disrespect. You know, it's like the highest, most disrespect. They're trying to disrespect you like they're upset with you. They're letting you know through the action yeah. that they're mad at you. Um, Facebook messages, your days and number, we're getting closer to you, things like that. Like, I, after the Trump thing, that's when everything, and I ain't even worried about them. What worried me with Trump was Guantanamo Bay. Mm-hmm. Right? When he said treason, mm-hmm. like, I ain't, I'm not going to sit here like I'm the hardest dude in the world. You can do what you want to do with me. I'm going to have to deal with it, right? Mm-hmm. But Guantanamo Bay ain't like a prison. Mm-hmm. Guantanamo Bay is where they put terrorists, and you have no constitutional rights there. Like, wow. all the marching in the world, you, Brother Bless, anybody can lead all the actions in the world and can't nobody pull me out of there. Mm. That's something that was like, mm. this is heavy. This is heavy. So when we were, um, was watching, you know, how you start your day, um, mm-hmm. which I think is so important. I, I, me personally, I do the same thing. I have to start my day in prayer. Amen. And you speak about meditation. So I'm sure, like, because I'm trying to figure out how are you keeping yourself sane through this. Is that your, your way of keeping yourself sane? It's, um, thank God for the black woman. My mother, mm-hmm. my sister, my lady, like... If it wasn't for them, they keep me grounded. I'd mm-hmm. be a maniac out here, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like legit. Because yeah. because you know you just they keep me grounded. Mm-hmm. They keep me humble. Mm-hmm. Because 
what everybody see in me, I don't see. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like people like, I, I go, I'll never forget, we went out to Jersey. A brother got a, James Carey, got a food bank out there. And um, he gave us like 150 chickens, frozen chickens for us to give out in the hood. Mm-hmm. And um, we went out there and he was like, and to do, he was like, yeah, this is the star. This is the celebrity. You know what I mean? Like, like, I don't feel that. <laughs> I don't see that. I wake up in the morning. I see a, a dude who in his 40s, who's handsome, no. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I see a dude who's in his 40s. There's just out here that's like really just fighting for the people. You know, saying things that are a little bit different than other activists might say. Why? Because I'm trained differently. Mm. I have a business degree. I have a law degree. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, so I get some attention. I understand that, you know, we're on the news. We're on TV a lot. But there's nothing in me that walks around like I'm that, like I'm the one. There is no part of me that says that. Nah, like I understand it. Just like God gave it to me. Mm Mm-hmm. Like he could take it all back. Amen. Like like people ask why why like like is it hard for you not drinking? Yeah, there was some real hard times. But I just think if I take a sip, God will just take it all back. Mm. All this work, all this everything, it'll be for nothing. Mm. So um so yeah, back to like what keeps me grounded. You know, I got two kids. Mm-hmm. I have my daughter, Asada, she's three. Okay. My son, he's um he's seventeen. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to their mothers mm-hmm. because since May, life has been flipped upside down with this movement. So um, they've been helping out a lot, mm-hmm. picking up a lot of slack. I got full custody of my son, but his mom took him for like two months to just be like, you go ahead, do what you got to do. I'll hold him down. Mm-hmm. So That's so great. shout out, you know, shout yeah, out to them for beautiful. doing that. But um, yeah, definitely like God and the black woman, mm. like, for real. That's who keep me. Grounded, keep me grounded and keep humble. you in, yeah, and even yeah. also keeping it together with all of these threats and all of these, you know what I mean? Like that's what's keep giving you that peace. Word, word, like you know, Ma Dukes, my mother, like I'm like going to CNN, right? She's like, you can take the garbage out for you. Like wait, mm-hmm. you don't see me. You ain't see me take a shower and get fresh. I'm going to CNN right now. I'm going to talk to Don Lemon right now. Mm. And you want me to pick up some nasty garbage, but you know, like that's your family. Like, yeah, nah, you really family. ain't shit. You know, <laughs> you, you get that and take that downstairs. But you know, that that just is a constant reminder. Um, I'm thankful for a lot of my friends. Mm-hmm. You know, like my neighborhood people who knew me when I was Walter. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because this this activism world is 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 is. is it's 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 ugly. Yeah, it's a lot. Like it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's ugly. It's, a lot. it's ugly, especially when you see the inner workings and the deals that's being made. Mm. There's a lot of people who are really in this for the glamour, mm. right? There's people who just show up, give speeches, and don't do no other work. Wow. You know, most of my work is done behind the scenes. Like yeah. we helped find three little girls a few weeks ago who was missing. Oh my God, that's and incredible. Now, yeah, it's right, a big it's blessing. All God, right? Yeah. And now people sending us flyers of missing women. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we put them on our page. We help with the search parties. But like that's like a whole new thing we ain't even account for. That, that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm like saying? even just listen, I'm like, okay, I, I got this interview thinking it's you know, it's not just Black Lives Matter. You're doing things beyond just the Black Lives Matter. What I mean by that is beyond is like you said, you're finding missing people. You're feeding the the homeless and you're feeding people in the products and you're giving out funds. So you're doing a lot more than just that's on your resume that yeah. you're talking about, like you said, it's account for. That another thing was too, um, I don't want to make you lose your train of thought. Uh-huh. I'll let you continue. No, that. I already oh, lost okay. them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. I, I, it'll come back. It okay. was meant to come so back. So you were, you know what? I was watching something too. This is something that we, when we go back, you talked about, this is when you were Walter. I, you talked about selling weed, smoking weed, and you also talked about dropping out of high school. But mm-hmm. see, this is the funny thing about this and is that you did all that, but what put you on the path to getting your business degree? And like you said, your law degree, because mm-hmm. if you... You dropped out of high school and did all this. Now tell me what happened in between there. How, what did that? Um, it's funny. Like we didn't have much, but I grew up like a little privileged kid mm-hmm. in the hood in the height of the South Bronx. Like I had all the clothes I wanted, mm-hmm. and I always had new clothes to mm-hmm. the point where 
Hating teachers would be mad. Like, mm. like I walk into the, I'm in the third grade, and I walk in to, to you know how the teachers send you to give something to another teacher in the teacher's lounge before email and all that, uh-huh. and I have on like a two tone guest jean suit. Like, mm-hmm. with zippers on it, like Michael Jackson and Thriller. Mm-hmm. Fresh with my, my little shoes on. I'm yeah. killing it. Yeah. Eight years old. Wow. And the teacher be like, look me up and down. Do you know what you have on? Yeah. Talk about like, it. Like, yeah, it's guess. My mother bought it. Right. Like, <laughs> right. check yourself. Like, right. it was exactly. to the point where <laughs> I would misbehave and, and the teachers, like, be like, send him to school like the rest of the kids. Like, why are you even telling my parents that? But my parents... Both of my parents, like my mother, my dad modeled. Mm. My mother used to make her own clothes. Mm -hmm. Like my parents always believed that you need to look like a million bucks. All right. Right. No matter how poor you are. um, No matter how. We were always encouraged to dress up, dress up on the days we felt our worst. Mm. Right. Because the image you project to the world is supposed to be an image of success. Yes. And it's not always about name brands and things right. like that. But it's about being clean, being exactly. presentable. You know what you I mean? Represent, this is you. you your best representation. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so. um, So. So, yeah, like like it's 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 always it's always been that. But one of the reasons they used to give me, like, I had the sneakers the drug dealers wore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One of the reasons they did that was so my sister wouldn't sleep with a man for a little $40. Or some sneakers and some or some earrings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so 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 I wouldn't go out and feel like I, I needed the hustle to get whatever I needed, right? So um I never forget when I like I dropped out of high school. I just didn't fit. Like I just didn't fit. I, I played ball, so I knew the cool kids, yeah, but I didn't feel comfortable with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like like the the not the B level cool kids. Mm-hmm. That was like my crew, but it wasn't enough to keep me interested. Mm-hmm. The the classes were boring, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. if you you know you research it, people with higher IQs in our communities tend to drop out more often than mm-hmm. not because they're not challenged by right. the school. No, system, that's so true. Right? That's so true. So um yeah. so so I dropped out and um you know my, my family was extremely disappointed. And I never forget. I had this one pair of Barclays I had for like a whole year, and I get new sneakers like every month, every two months, and because they they like cut me off. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you ain't going to school. You mm-hmm. think you gonna walk around fresh? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> like what? Education first. <laughs> yeah. So um, so so I dropped. Out. I just wanted to be down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I really wanted to be down. So you know, we we had you know whatever pistols. We would sell weed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I had my little crew. But the craziest thing was, right, I'll never forget we had, like, a weed spot, mm-hmm. right, in the Bronx. And I'd be outside, big chain. Remember the A-Solo boots? You remember those? Mm-hmm. Right? Jay-Z was in the Dead Presidents video. Okay. And he jumped out of the GS feet first mm-hmm. in these A-Solos. I looked around mm-hmm. the city for, like, three months until I found those boots. It was like three hundred dollars. That was a lot back then for some boots, right? Mm-hmm. And um and I found them boots and I had the chain and I'd be sweeping in front. We had like a little bodega. We sold weed out of my friends oh, would be wow. going to school, I'd be waving. <laughs> <laughs> but Thursday at eight o'clock I was in basketball practice. <laughs> that weekend I was traveling the country playing against the best basketball players out there. Wow. So wow, um while I was cutting up and acting up, I was still balling. Mm-hmm. I, there was still a positive there. Uh-huh. I played with them. Um, I was on the same team with Ron Artest, Metal World Peace, won the chip with oh. the Lakers. Remember Kobe gave it to him. He won the chip. Um, Elton Brand, the GM of the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm-hmm. Like, I played with real ballers, but, wow. you know, they'll go to school. I'll go to sell weed. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I got um, I got arrested. And my family had an intervention. Okay. And um, what was really interesting was my friends, who I thought was my friends, like my man and and his family, they bailed him out and left me in there. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I thought I was part of the family. Mm-hmm. So it kind of let me know, like, I ain't really with you. I ain't right. really got your back. Right. I was a wake-up call. I was yeah. something, you know, and I was always fighting. I got a little cut on my hand. I had to get, like, it cut me or whatever. But um, it was it was, it was was a lot of things happening, 
at that time, and I was like, kind of like when I pump breaks. Mm -hmm. you know, I was in jail a week or two or whatever, mm -hmm. but that's when I pumped my breaks and really took an evaluation and signed a contract with my family mm -hmm. that I would do right. Okay. And um, yeah, the next year I was in college. The next year you The were next in year college? I was in college. Like I wow. got my GED and the okay. next year I was in so and yeah. And back to school. Got back. back on and that's how you got the law degree and the yeah. business degree. Oh, yeah. Okay. I ain't I I really go to school for education. I went to play ball. Like yeah. all my friends who I played with was going to college. I went to <laughs> I wanted to go away and play ball. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went to like one of the best schools though, right? Yeah, I went to uh Midland. Midland was like top junior college mm. in the country. Mm. But Yet again, okay, this is this is me and my toxicity, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we were fourth in the country. We were undefeated. Like, uh, Major D1, it was a junior college. Major D1 schools would come to watch us. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be a thug. I'm out there, I got jewels and watches, and I got everything. Yo, my family, when, I, when they found out I was going to college, three different family members took me on shopping sprees. Mm. I was in Texas for two months before I repeated a shirt. Oh, wow. Like, they bought me wardrobes, plural. <laughs> like, wow. what? You went from getting arrested and this and so that proud. to going to college? Like, yeah. yeah. So, um, but in, in Texas, like, you know, I, I should have been focusing on my books mm -hmm. and, and going to class. But, like, I'm riding around, like, fake Tupac. I'm in a drop <laughs> red. I'm in a red drop with four chicks. I'm uh. in the back seat sitting up, smoking blunts, riding through the town. Like, what's <laughs> wrong with you? Like, you are an athlete. Like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? You know what I mean? But, like, yeah, you know, that was just me being young and dumb. But that part of my life is, is I'm thankful for. Yeah. For even the messing up. Yeah. Because I started a program mm. before Black Lives Matter called okay. the Bronx Sharks. And we helped over 100 um, at-risk youth go away to college. And, um, like, we had one kid who just came out of jail, shot up a party, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he worked with us, and he played basketball with us. But somehow, uh, Bill Coachman, who I work with, he was actually a probations officer. Bill Coachman, who I work with, got him a, a scholarship to play football somewhere in Ohio at a prep school. Mm -hmm. So we got a shooter mm -hmm. with Buffy and Tip and all these little rich white kids in their school mm -hmm. playing football. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I always give them the jewels. Like, this is how I messed up in college. Like, I was just going to ask yeah. you that. And so those those, those at-risk youth, you, you can identify with, you probably weren't, you know, like, as bad as them, but there's certain parts and elements of you that can relate to it. And so that allowed you. So, see, that's another thing where all things work to, for our good. You see what Amen. I'm saying? Because you're able to pull someone else out because you've been there. You've seen it, and you don't want them to go through the same things that you that's went it. through. So you created that after high college? Or? Um, I created that when right before I went to law school. I oh, worked wow. at um, Wilson. I worked at the DA's office first, mm -hmm. so I know the system from inside and out. Mm. And I worked at a corporate firm, and while I was there, I created the Bronx Sharks with my father. And um, funny thing is, one of the kids who I coached, who I mentored over the years, his daughter was one of the three girls we found. Oh, wow. That's how we got pulled into that. Okay. And, like, I still talk to them. Like, mm -hmm. granted, most of them went to college and did the thing. That I told them not to do, like, coach, they found, uh, they said, they said, you know, I had an ounce of weed and, 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 and you know, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and after mm -hmm. about 10, 20 minutes of being on the phone, well, where was the weed? Oh, it was in my book bag and I left it over there with my ID. Oh, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Like, yeah, it was yours. Like, let's figure out how to get you out of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what? Let's pray. Yeah. <laughs> and then let's strategize on how to keep you in school. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not the dude that's going to throw people away for their mistakes. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's because that's I made more than enough. And if it yeah. wasn't by God's grace and God's Amen. mercy. Like, so for me, it's like. You know, I'm not trying to make amends for things that I've done. Yeah. But, like, I'm really here trying to help as many people as possible. And that's... You know and, what I mean? Yeah, and that's what your life is doing. It's so funny. People don't realize, in the Bible, God didn't take the perfect people. He took the people that people threw away. They said, oh, well, you can't do nothing with him. Oh, he's his life is too bad. He's this. Oh, he's a sinner. He's that. But those are the very people that were used, that was raised up for his glory. And so, that's what... Go ahead. The stone that the builder refused. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's it. That exactly. That's so it. that's what's happening here. You know, to me, I, I personally 
you know, I love your story. Thank you. I love I love where you come from and I love where you are. And most importantly, you know, you gotta focus on where you're going now. You know what I mean? It, it was Amen. all for the good. And so um away from that, when we you and I we had that phone conversation the first day we spoke. You know, this is all ties into the positivity because, see, I didn't know what you had went through. Now this makes sense. When we were talking about helping, you know, women and mothers with sons, teaching them to treat women, you know, with respect, honor, and our, honoring our black queens. And then that yeah. also probably goes to when you mentioned about the situation with the woman that were, was helpful for to you. I'm not sure if she was your, your yeah, girlfriend. Was girlfriend. Yeah, yes, absolutely. yes. And you felt like you heard her and, and different things like that. And it's so funny because you're able to even basically help someone else's life. You know what I mean? Some guys, they, they don't realize they have a good thing in their lives. And so mm -hmm. you can even let them know, like, you better wake up and realize before it's too late, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, what, I, what I've noticed is, like, we don't know how to value and respect our women. Mm. Right, like, like, dudes, like, you know, I, I ain't really an abusive type dude. I just shook her up. Nah, bro, that's abuse. Yo, I did this, so I hit. She did this, so I hit her. Like, no matter what she did, you have no right to put your hand on that woman. Right. Right. Are you listening to your woman? Are you respecting her humanity? Like, I, I really think that. The way we are raised mm -hmm. is to think that our women are, are less than human beings. Mm. And if you don't think that somebody is a human being, then you can justify anything you do to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I don't think that our people really understand the impact mm. of devaluing our women. Yes. Right? Yes. Because, you know... Um, I never forget when I was 17, that Dr. Dre, The Chronic, was in heavy rotation. What was the hottest song on there? Bitches Ain't Shit. Right? Mm-hmm. Right? You look at Nino Brown, when he threw old girl down on the table, poured champagne over her head and said, cancel that bitch. Yes. Like, oh, Nino a boss. He right. wildin'. Yeah. But what the fuck did Nino just do? Right? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. like what did he re he just literally like assaulted her, dehumanized her. Right. And and we've been taught to like, like, we've been taught that like a lot of a lot of negative, a lot of evil mm -hmm. behavior mm -hmm. is culturally acceptable. Talk. So how do we pump the brakes on that mm -hmm. and head down a different path? Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, so with me, it's like I'm trying to empower as many women as possible. Mm -hmm. Like my little sister stepped to the forefront. And this year, Wall Street Journal, uh, CNN, Vogue, wow. Elle magazine, Cosmo. Like, wow. like and oh, wow. boom. Run like like our director of operations. Incredible. Like you know, there's been so many people and and like women who I've tried to uplift. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like and and this is what is important to me. Mm -hmm. You know, to take up less space mm -hmm. and kind of like let them run. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And support them and what they're doing, just like they've supported us for centuries. Yeah. You know, but um, we need to reprogram. Yes. Black men. Black men. And do you think, and, and speaking of that, do you think, because I was talking with Les about music, don't you think one way, too, is through, through the music? Because music is such a powerful tool that's going out over the airways, affecting people. You talked about the song that you heard at 17. Yeah. You know, you said, bitches ain't shit, right? So, yeah. but imagine if we put life in our music by uplifting, up curb, and encouraging, building up the women through yeah. that music, how it'll also, it'll start to change. Like Tupac said, I may, you know, start the flame, the, the whatever to, but it's going to start something different. I can't mm -hmm. quote the way Pac said it exactly. I always get it twisted. But don't you think if more brothers would begin to, like I said, do those things, uplifting our women even through music? Because music, hip-hop music is the biggest force right now. Yeah. Right? You know? I think we have to really look at it mm -hmm. from a real perspective. Mm -hmm. um, like right now, I can't tell you who the hottest rapper is right mm -hmm. now. But, I, you know, I listen to it. I ain't mm -hmm. no front. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, um, like... There is nothing revolutionary in their music. Right. But if you look at Tupac. Yes. 
revolutionary. You look at Public Enemy, revolutionary music. Mm -hmm. You look at Queen Latifah. Yeah, she you was. You and I, yeah. right? You got to let them yeah. know you ain't a bitch or a hoe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But now, every like most women rapping is, I am that bitch, this bitch, that bitch. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? I so do. it's it's toxic it's on very both toxic. sides. On both sides. The men and the women. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> it's, it's so cultural. Like... I don't I like I, Western Western music is the blues. Mm -hmm. It's just white people singing the blues, mm -hmm. and they're not degrading the women. Right, right. Like, like, like. I, I, I grew up on you know Otis Redding. I grew up on Hal Melvin and the Blue Notes. Um, you know Marvin Gaye, and you think about the way they spoke to women, mm -hmm. spoke to women. But now everything is throw cash at her or Birkin bag me or like it's like bro, like wait yeah. Wait a second, right. like, what Talk are we reinforcing, it. like, what? like, wait, like, yeah. a man is garbage unless mm -hmm. he could provide this for you. Right. A woman is trash unless she got, you know what I mean, all these accessories on her body. Like, 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 this is, this is like, it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. it's in, in like, where's the value on intelligence? Mm -hmm. Like, like, I, I, I hear a lot of these little young dudes rapping. When I hear them speak, they sound like idiots you know what i mean like like jesus christ like i hope they don't stick a a, a a a a microphone in your face yeah like i would dare somebody to put a microphone in chuck d krs1 queen latifah uh uh, uh sister soldier i dare somebody to put a mic in their face and challenge them mm -hmm. now I'm afraid to have rappers talk about Black Lives Matter. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus Christ, they're going to set us back. Uh, I don't, like, like, no, do not let that dude talk. But that's the reality of it. You yeah, know what it I mean? Is. Like, that's, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. That's why we got to make change. We got to do better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We got to set the standard. And I think if we start doing that, you know, change will come about. Like you, you're setting the standard, you know, with what you're doing. You know what I mean? Right. We need people in all these these fields, hip hop. Yeah. We need to be in all of these fields, the the television field, um, as well. Just dominating, even yeah. the field of sports. You know what I mean? Well, Representing, like, representation is, yeah. is is key. You know, um, you you talk about TV and the way you know the black women, black people are portrayed. That's why I'm glad to see the emergence of black people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Tyler Perry. People say what they want to say about Medea movies. I used to watch all the plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ain't got time to really watch the movies. But um, he built his own studio. Right. Right. In Atlanta. It's like, like right now it's Amazing. about ownership. Yes, but it is. But not in this imperialistic, capitalistic right. way. Exactly. It's about cooperative mm -hmm. economics. And I promise you, I promise you, if you and him go home tonight, mm -hmm. right, and you watch the Black Power mixtape, right, you watch Malcolm X, you watch Spike Lee's Malcolm X, you watch whatever you want to watch, mm -hmm. and you listen to what they're saying, mm -hmm. we are saying the same things today. Now is the time for us to get this Black Power thing Right. Yes. Stokely Carmichael as well. Like yeah. now is the time for us to really, really, really get it right. We have mm -hmm. the technology. We yes. there's no time right better than now. Better than now. Than to divest from America. Yeah. Like 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 and I'm not I'm I'm saying stop contribute stop paying all these corporations that don't care about you and start buying black. Amen. You know what I mean? Like, Amen. like, like. Yes, yeah, someone gonna buy me some Dior kicks. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna be fresh. But at the same time, I'm gonna go to a black owned business and I'm gonna drop a bag on them exactly. so I can wear some of their sweatsuits yeah. with these Dior kicks. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like we can't thrive. Um, I mean, we can't wholeheartedly be invested in this, this, the, these corporations that don't care about us, they're black people doing everything. Mm -hmm. There's anything that you want, anything you need, from cosmetics to food to restaurants to clothing, 
there's a black person that could satisfy that need. Yeah. Now, what we need to do is get that white supremacy slave mentality out of our heads and go ahead and spend that coin with and, black people. And say that again, though, though, because don't you think that we we ourselves need to support each other first, first and foremost? Like, say that again, how important it is for us to support each other. Like, instead of us getting intimidated or we think that we need to be the only one, mm -hmm. but we need to join together, I believe, and support each other. Like, yeah. it's good that it's me, it's you, it's him, it's her, you know what I mean? It's all of us together winning. It doesn't need to just be one of us at the top winning, but we all need to come to the top to win. That's it. That's how everybody else does it. Right. Um, I, I, I forget what I was working on a few weeks ago, but it talked about money in the community, mm -hmm. right? And 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 the average time that a, a I don't I don't want to lie to y'all. Yeah. Right. But a dollar um, would be circulated. Maybe, oh, shit, man, it's, I'll, I'll get the information for y'all. Yeah. Right? But as far as spending money in your own community, blacks are the absolute worst. The best are Asians and Jewish people, right? And they keep their money circulating in their communities infinitely before it leaves their community. Our, our money maybe might circulate one time before we give it to somebody else from some other community. Right. That's problematic. Like, Fuck a Chinese restaurant. Right. Because in, in 40 years, 40 plus years, I called one Chinese restaurant and a black person picked up the phone. And I yeah. thought I had the wrong number. Yeah. Right. You look at the bodegas in our hood, you know, it was blacks. Then it was, you know, it was blacks, black people, including West Indians. Then it went Puerto Rican. Then it went Dominican. But now it's like mostly Yemenese. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of other people in our community who take our money, don't employ our people. Right. And they send that money back out. Now, right. some of these Yemenese um, people I work with, right? Mm -hmm. But the nature of that work is you're going to invest in our community. Talk about I got your it. back, but you're going to invest in, gonna, in, right. in, in, in our community. Right. And, and, and what we need to start doing is, like, if we got to go out of our way to buy black to support black business, then let's, let's talk about let's it. Let's do it. Let, you know what right? I mean? That's what I want to do that. I would love to talk with you even more about, not today, but mm -hmm. another time, because I think that needs to be stressed more than ever, right? Especially now. I mean, there's so many um, CEOs and, and successful people that, that, that buildings would be, I mean, um, I said buildings, but their their companies would be winning right now if we would just invest and support each other. Some people are not where they need to be because not enough of us are supporting each other. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I would Absolutely. love to talk with you more even about that because I'm so big on that, you know, us supporting each other. I can't.